I had to quickly learn the currency of respect, which is, you know, people had to fear you. Mm -hmm. They had to fear you. And in order for you to get on, do you know, like a prospect, I suppose. Yeah, yeah people got they got <coughs> respect was was based on fear. Killer Keller official dot com. You need the Kellervision app. Twenty four seven mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top five subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Created. Killer Keller. And we're here to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. Uh, big shout out to graffitikings.co.uk. Uh, the streets are watching. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller Podcast live and direct central London or central as you need to be, should be, or even dare to be. Yeah, that's right. We're straight in the mix, in the lion's den, the eye of the storm with a new friend of mine. <laughs> oh my God. Um, Shaman. Uh, author, illustrator, comic creator, lyricist, MC, and overall a fucking good egg. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Phoenix, the ice fire inside the place. UK hip hop. Love, 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 King. Bro, love, love. UK hip hop is definitely in the building. I love what you're doing. First and foremost, I love what you're doing, man. All tight. I love what you're doing, like It's just amazing. It's like we need more people who are who are willing to give platforms for others. It's almost like you. It's like you've graduated from being someone on the receiving end of a platform to creating a platform yourself. Uh, do you know what I mean? Bro. It's like you've graduated and it's it's just in this stage in your career, it's just art. Oh, it's just amazing to see. My bro, honestly, I'm not even going to get into the detail. We, we've had a chat before and we've done a few things with a few things that you guys are going to see in the near future. But uh, I just, I think a lot, of those compliments and I, I graciously accept I really appreciate it um, I, there are a lot of them come from a person that is multitasked and has multi disciplines and skill sets so to hear that from you is massively appreciated for yeah, real. Man, it's real, it's real for those of you who don't know about the ice kid right here <laughs> shit so <laughs> it comes from a, a, a long historical line of uh, British hip hop you're definitely in that generation whereby there's such a positive energy Mm. A scene, a real community vibe. Mm -hmm. This is really happening. And, yo, I'm going to say it. The UK hip-hop scene is the best it's been. Oh, yes. Yeah, in booming. a minute. It's booming now. It's booming now. What are you saying on this? Like, I mean, humble beginnings. Were you always part of the UK hip-hop scene? Was it a thing? Well, I started off as a grime MC, you know? Like, I think what triggered that... Um, is that I used to draw, yeah? At the age of, it was around about seven yeah. where I was like watching a lot of cartoons and everything. And the first thing I wanted to do was be a cartoonist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted to be a cartoonist and I used to draw. I've, I've gone through, you know, different things growing up, growing up, you know, domestic violence and all kinds of different things. Mm. My mom and dad splitting up, divorcing. And I used to get my energy and frustration out in my illustrations. I used to draw right. it out. And then it got to a point where, you know, I think the turning point was when um, the first kind of rap that kind of got me into rap, the first rap I did was that Space Jam rap. You remember the yeah. Space Jam? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Yeah. That was, uh, I memorized the whole thing and it was like, yeah, I really feel that. It felt... It's like the creativity and the energy got so much. It needed to come out in different ways, you know? It, was, yeah. it wasn't quick enough. It wasn't really coming out. So um, at the age of 13, um, um, uh, I saw the murderer of um, someone who was like Sheldon Anthony Bob. He was like an older brother to me. Because being the so eldest... How old were you then? Yeah, I was 13. 13, 13. Yeah, he was like an older brother to me. Mm. Being the eldest and everything mm. and not really having a lot of... I didn't really have male strong role models around me, mm. you know? Um, he was like a role model to me. He was like an older brother. And when he got murdered and everything and I saw the, the his murderer walking off, like... Um, it was just like an earthquake, man. So you saw it happen? I didn't actually see it happen. I see him walk away from him. Bro, yeah, that is... I just saw him, man. He's, he's, 
they, they, they battered his head. He was just bleeding, and oh, it was just oh, it was mad. How did you? How would? How would you? How do you? How do you come to terms with something so vicious and in front of you like that? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I just feel like I've always had like this strong resilience. I'm not sure if I've got it from my dad or my mum or whatever, but we just just got through it, man. It was like, all right, it's happening. Cool, move forward, and just we after that, and I um. I kind of gave a statement to the police and everything, description, what he looked like, whatever. They moved us mm. um, for for witness protection and they moved us to Deptford. And moving from Lewisham to Deptford, it was like a very big cultural shock. Do you know what I mean? I can imagine, yeah. Where there wasn't really any gangs or anything. Like in my little estate, there wasn't really that, you know? And when I moved from uh, Lewisham to Deptford... Um, my the secondary school I was in was like one of the worst in London. It was the absolute worst, do you know, where people were fighting in the classrooms, like teachers were sleeping with students. Um, there was gangs in there. There was triads. This is when I first started to learn about the whole gang culture because wow. I'm there. And when people are kind of stepping to you and you're like trying to defend yourself, it's like, yeah, but like, this one is in the gang. He's got all of these guys as backup. He's got all of these guys. And and there was me. Like, I, originally, I was born in Mile End from East. Yeah, so all my it. family are in East. Yeah. I'm in South by myself yeah. as an older brother, you know. Yeah. And, you know, I had to be, I felt like I had to be, like, um, I had to be the father. I had to be that uh, male figure that I needed in my yeah. life. And um, for my younger brothers as well, I had to be the protector. So, you know, going through all of that. Did you? Feel, so do, sorry, please, just to cut through. Please, do, you, please. do you feel like there was a compromise on your part? Like when you're in those situations where it's school, out and about, socially, like that, that pays a heavy toll on the heart and the head, doesn't it? Mm. Did you feel like you compromised a lot with with your person? Yeah, I yeah. had to be. I had to quickly learn the currency of respect, which is, you know, people had to fear you. Mm -hmm. They had to fear you and in order for you to get on, you know? Like a prospect, I suppose. Yeah, yeah people got, they got, the <coughs> respect was, was based on fear, mm -hmm. which is really just a byproduct of how this world is run anyway. It's yeah, run yeah. on fear, you know? Yeah, primal yeah, hierarchy. Yeah, primal tribalism, yeah. and, and, but fear. Tribalism in 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 the least flattering way because mm. really tribalism is a sense of community. Do you know mm. what I mean? It's community. It's like moving as one organism. But it's yeah. So all of that, going through all of that, I had a lot to kind of express where um, illustrating wasn't getting it out anymore. So lyrics came into play. Yeah. So that's when I got into grime. That's when I got into grime. That's um, sick. I think it's yeah, yeah, bad. Yeah, but it of course yeah. makes logical sense, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. You know, when you're in this position whereby you're you're under so much pressure and pent up and you're a creative person, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know. But did Grime, because at its time, Grime was yes. definitely its peak. It wasn't even called Grime back then. I was there in the original era, like the beginning era of it, where it was coming from Garage to Grime. Grime is what it What become, did you get? What do you call that era? That... I yeah, remember it was the golden age. Yeah, it, it was the golden age. It was the golden age. Like I grew up. I'll tell you something very funny. Um, I grew up listening to Wiley and Dizzy Rascal and stuff. And then I later found out that Wiley was related to me. Stop it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, yeah. cold. Yeah, 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 yeah. But so I grew up listening to him. Thinking, mm. It's freaking incredible. Oh my god. You know what I mean? And then it's like, yeah, yeah, he's family. That's mad. Yeah, 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 yeah. What, distant or reasonably... Distant, yeah, 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 yeah. It's like my cousin's cousin. Yeah, my cousin's cousin. Oh, fucking hell. Yeah, so... Serendipity. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's mad, it's mad, it's mad. And um, so Grime was a way for me to kind of express... I used to be in a crew with um, P Money, Funky D, Blacks, you know, the ones who call themselves the OGs now. Mm -hmm. We used to call ourselves Fatal Assassins and we was in a crew together. Knowledge, kicking knowledge, I had a killer club. Do you know what I mean? It's what you're here for. Come on, baby. So it's like that. I felt like grime was a container for my negative energy. And also what I was experiencing then, you know, getting into 
you know, gang culture, um, having to kind of toughen up, harden up. Um, it was um, it was a catharsis for getting rid of negative energy. Mm. But at that time, um, I started reading a lot. I started reading a lot. I got into like right knowledge, you know, with um, Dr. Malachi Z. York, um, who is someone who created, like what he did is he's went gone into all of the different religions. Mm. And all the different languages that are attached to those religions, mm. and he's drawn everything together and show and pointing it all the way back to ancient Africa, to Egypt, yeah, 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 and and all over, and he's he's, he's broken it down, and it's like, yeah, this is actually this, this is actually this, really decoded not, the Bible, yo. decoded Islam, all of that. So it's like I was in a period of time of feeding myself with knowledge, you know, mm. and it got to the point. How old are you at that time? I started at 13. Everything happened at that age, yeah. The big shift, my, my whole shift happened uh, at, at that age. That's crazy. I mean, it's hard not to be inspired by some... When you get an information, an information overload like that, yeah, yeah, you must yeah. have just been in your element. Well, it was... At that age? Yeah, well, at first, it was something that, like, my mum was scared of. She said, I hope you're not getting into some kind of cult or anything, mm. so... You know, it's like when you start forging your own path and you start going into the, the, the path less traveled, you got to be ready to stand by yourself because how are you going to know something is steel unless you test it, unless mm. you try to bend it or break it? You can't build with it if you don't test it. Everything is tested. Go test it. So the first thing is like, just before you start off on your journey, it's like, okay, what are you made of? Mm. What can I do with this? If I put a big ton, 10 ton brick on it, is it going to break? Yeah. Is it going to fold? And that's the beginning stages. The foundation yeah. is the most important in a structure. People want to fast forward over that bit. Yeah, but they you want can't. to put the roof on it. They can't. Yeah, they want to put the roof of the plumbing. It's like, yeah, but you got to make sure the ground yeah. is able, it's the ground, the foundation, which is going to determine what you can put on it. Truth. Truth. And, and you know, even closer, your projects, the things that you're doing right now. I mean, oh, we yeah. won't defer from what oh, we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. But even them as well, if we don't cultivate the initial like you say, the, the, the building blocks, mm -hmm, the framework, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. you, you, the bits that make the thing yeah, secure, yeah, 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 then yeah, you're yeah, fucked. Yeah, yeah, yeah you, you are, you are. You and, are. When, and in those situations where uh, it's almost like you, you become this lone star with a point to prove, because like you say, it's an untrodden ground mm -hmm, and you're walking mm -hmm, it mm -hmm, and you're, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you can mm -hmm. see the cynicism in people's mm -hmm, eyes. Mm -hmm, you, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know what you're reading, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is that old as time, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but in this modern quote unquote modern age where these things are just they're hidden they're not there mm -hmm, mm -hmm, they, they, mm -hmm. they, you know it must must have been quite a journey quite a it was it was a very powerful journey man like i'll never forget this moment where um it was like my first days in secondary school in one of the worst schools um in london i mean there everyone's fighting no one's listening to the teacher and um this, uh, St Stefan, Stefan is now my best friend. He's, he's a brother to me. He was in the back of the classroom. He was like one of the cool kids, you know what I mean? Like it was in the back of the classroom with his arms folded. And <laughs> it's like everyone disappeared. I'm going to come back to these moments as well, but mm -hmm. like everything disappeared. You know, have you ever like met someone who you were supposed to meet? And it's like everything, time slows down and everything just, it, yeah. it's like, almost like... I think almost, we all do, don't yeah, we? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a spiritual thing yeah. that's taking place. It's like spirits are around and everything. It's Deja actually, vu almost. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. Deja vus are just memories of something we've already experienced, you know what I mean? That's a fact, isn't it? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So everything slowed down around him and it just it's like everything just quietened down. I just said, I just went up to him. Something made me go up to him and he said... Um, he started talking to me about um, Dr. Malachi in the noise and everything. He goes, he goes, have you met? He goes, have you, do you know about Dr. Malachi? You know about right knowledge? And I said, no, I have no idea. And he goes, let me show you something. And we came out of the classroom, went upstairs to the freaking internet and he just started. And that was my first kind of boom. 
It's like some like start of some eighties movie that just, do you know what I mean? Are we gonna get there? I never started it, you know. Are we gonna get there? We're gonna get there. I'll probably be locked up for in a loony bin at the end of this. Hey, listen, man, don't watch that. Talking to the beat. Might have to de- delete the whole thing. I'll be like, killer. We're gonna have to delete the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but in a proper eighties fashion. <laughs> Dude, this is crazy. So mm-hmm. you met your friend, and he what he sh- he basically showed you roadmaps that yeah, you just yeah, like never. Yeah, yeah, and his dad, his dad is um, Minister Rebel, um, someone who was because um, this was obviously started off in America. Doctor Malachi is someone who bought this big land in America mm. and was building pyramids on there and have people living there for free. Government has obviously come in, shut him down. Whatever he was in. I think he's written a record of like over 600 books he's been writing. What? Yeah, yeah. They tried to say he was a pedophile, whatever, <laughs> and locked him up. Uh, you know, but he had everyone living there for free. And mm. he's, he's gone in and he's broken down all of the different religions and everything, even created a, a language. That's such a witch maneuver, isn't it? He's mad. He's mad. He's mad. Look, look at yeah, you yeah. Know what I mean, he's kiddie fiddling, but yeah. it's like you don't need to kiddie yeah, yeah, fiddle yeah. when people are throwing themselves at him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's turning people away. Wait, you yeah. know? Shit, uh, get the that's fuck out. That's how they do. Yeah, yeah, that's how they do. Yeah. yeah. Anything to do with empowering people. So, yeah, that was my spark. And after doing grime and everything, I got so, um, my mind was open so much that that container didn't serve me anymore. Mm. I couldn't speak about being negative or or, or um, um, fighting or anything. I couldn't talk about that anymore because I knew too much. So that's when I segued off into hip hop. Um, I, I, I started with a crew called Midas Touch, mm-hmm. um, a guy named AKS, Jade Exodus, and we was Midas Touch. And then when I was going to Speaker's Corner. A oh, hold tight Speaker's Corner. Yeah, hold tight Speaker's Corner, DJ mm-hmm. Snuff, Mike Assassin, oh, JB Spots, all of them. Yeah. The originals out here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. that was like my introduction because um, I... I then was going on a journey and some, I think someone had told me about Speaker's Corner and up until then, I was just in grime. You just, yeah, and there was just a lane that you wanted to get, in, but you wouldn't. Yeah, I didn't know that there was even that, like, you know, it was still like, okay, um, hip hop America. Mm, yeah. So when I got Speaker's Corner, it was just like, oh my God, I saw Stigger the Dump. Mm. I saw Dub, um, Double Edge. Um, and it was just introduced to this whole new world. I was like, raw. So mm. we got skills down mm, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a real level. And you just don't. That's the thing, right? I pair, yeah, I bro. pair uh, UK hip hop in the same context as maybe um, uh, rock and roll and heavy metal to a greater extent is. They can go in and out of fashion. Mm-hmm. Maybe mm-hmm. drum and bass, actually, yeah, yeah. to a certain degree. Mm-hmm. They can go in and out of fashion, but mm-hmm. there's always this consistency. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of people that mm-hmm. either like it or participate in it are lovers of the culture, yes, which makes yes, it, yes, which yes. is really hard for certain genres to understand because money isn't the first thing. No, it isn't. <laughs> it's, no. it's actually called being good, yes, having yes, skill yes. set. You know, there's a lot. There's a lot of skilled grime MCs, and I know there's a whole new generation, whole tight lyrical strally, and all them that are coming through hard. But again, we're talking about decades of of well, hip hop. It's like jazz. It's like it's got its roots. It's, it knows what it is, knows where it's mm-hmm. coming from. It's, it's a very clear and distinct intention. That's yeah. what some of that's what all of these musical genres are. They're the intention will never die. That's why it will never die. Yeah. Because it is a voice for the voiceless. Yeah. And voice for the fucking voices. Let's get into it. Fucking Oasis, right? Working class boys. Mm-hmm. Manchester. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nowhere to go. Yes, yes. Play yes. the guitar. Yes, yes. Go yes, to yes. Hacienda. Take some ease. Let's play the guitar. Mm-hmm. Making mm-hmm. music. Mm-hmm. Sounds like mm-hmm. Beatles. So what? Fucking great. Working mm-hmm. class boys. Yes. Want to get out doing the thing? Same with a lot of these artists that we love, Dizzy Rascal. When we think about the streets, when we think about um, even now, uh, Slow Tie, you know, these are people that they're on the ground mm-hmm. and they want more. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This this musical landscape, you need that, don't you? Mm-hmm. 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 You need that. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Hunger. 
Yes, you do, man. Like, and what I love about grime, how it started, like I got into it when it was called Garage. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, in the early stages, the beginning stages, man. Like, I grew up listening to Wiley and Dizzy Rascal. And, you know, I was blown away when I was told that Wiley is a family member of mine. <laughs> you know what I mean? crazy. Blown away, man. And, and really and truly, like, the essence of it is the same kind of essence of, like, how hip-hop was started. It was done, it was, it was cathartic for mm. them. These were people who were just pure expression, mm. you know, being the voice, being able to articulate things that people are going through. Do you know what I mean? It needed a voice. Like when yeah. yeah, when people are going through things, it's naturally going to manifest itself in a creative way. Mm -hmm. They say that if you want to tell the psyche of uh, a person or a people, um, look at the art that is coming from them. Somebody get the fucking bucket. He's on fucking fire out here. Dude, he just fucking threw that. That's sick. Yeah, look at the art. You'll see the psychology of the people and just look at the art. Do you think people actually, f the consumer, the members of public, the people, right, this is not in any way to undermine anyone or anything because I know a lot of people think about this shit. But do, do, you, do you think people actually are aware of that as a... You know, music's better yeah, with a political yeah. point of view. It's better with more subject depth, more, yeah. isn't it? But but we all like a bit of Takeshi Six Nine in the right gym. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I hear you. you know what I'm saying? Not unless he's snitching on you. No, then unless you ain't he's snitching. Like, then you ain't yeah, gonna like. Yeah, to I'm crush. saying. All right. <laughs> True. Yeah, okay. I'm okay. Done with no, you. no, 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 no. Yeah, I'm coming gone. from the. Yeah, expression in all forms. Yeah. Expression in all forms. It's like the sun. It's energy. What what do you, what do you want to do with it? Mm. Do you want to put on white clothes and dance in the sparkles of, of the sun? You want to get out a solar panel and, and capture it? Do you, you want to mm. get a magnifying glass and burn something with it? It can take any form that you want. Yeah, it's true. And, and it should take any form because it is limitless. It's creative expression. But the problem is because they are not allowing art to be given the platform that it is supposed to have, you, you're getting like this this blockage hmm. where it's like, yo, if you want to know what the people who are on the ground are experiencing, listen to the music, yeah. look at the art. But there's silence in that. And because there's silence in that, it's like, it's, it's, actually, it's actually intrinsically linked with how the Western world are dealing with problems. Hmm. Cause they're not they're they they're treating the symptoms mm. and they're not treating the root cause of it. Mm -hmm. Do you know? Yeah. And it's this whole makeup culture. Oh, we got blemish there. Just put makeup over it. It's, it's totally the way it's going. Oh, down. oh, and it's just a lie. We're just feeding into this lie and just saying, okay, put more on, put more on. Mm. You told one lie, you got to put another one on. Got to mm. put another one on. You got to keep oh. applying it. But the face yeah. underneath is damaged. It doesn't change. Doesn't change a thing. Doesn't change the truth, the yeah. fact of the matter. Yeah. So that, you know, that will culturally shift eventually. Oh, that is about to shift because yeah. it's like if you go, you keep going and not addressing the actual root cause of a problem. It doesn't actually make the problem go away. I was talking to Drill Minister about this, right? And the drill scene has had its fair share of, of lessons, mm -hmm. which to be honest, I just felt like should mm -hmm. have been dealt with back in the fucking early 80s, like 70s with punk. Just the, the scandalous kind of demonizing of a youth based on the lyrics that they're saying, you know, fucking... And a lot of the people that are putting this out there, you know, they grew up on NWA. They grew up on Public Enemy. You're fucking course. crazy. And there was rock stars and stuff. Like, I remember this. I can't remember his name, but my friend told me about... He showed me this rock star who used to... He used to, like, uh, abuse, f abuse women in his shows. He used to throw shit at them. Oh. Used, yeah, 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 Can't yeah. Remember the name. Yeah, yeah. And he was on a talk show talking about it, and like people were getting, he's yeah. assaulting his fans and yeah. everything. But that was okay. Yeah, that's not okay. Yeah, that was. Oh, he was given a platform, but you know, it's this whole mad racism. Yeah, thing. but really and truly, that's um, a, a disconnection from nature. It's a, it's a, it's, it's a symptom of a disconnection with nature, and a, and a, a lot of divide and conquer. Yeah, but that's what it is. Yeah. You, well, the truth is you're not conquering anything. Mm. 
You're just, you're just you're making... You're just opening the Pandora's, but making things a little bit more obvious, hard actually. And harder for yourself, in, yeah. in honesty. If we are divided, then we're not helping each other. Nah. And if I am, uh, I'm a good guy and you're a good guy, but we're not actually chatting to each other, then we're robbing ourselves of a, a greater experience yeah. in life. Yeah. And really, that's based on fear, and it's a shame, really. Yeah. It's disconnection from nature. We are nature. Music is nature. Music and is nature. Joe, going back to what you were saying prior to the segue, uh, yeah, the truth is that there is a suppression that stops. And you can feel it just by the way the government is behaving with regards to, you know, not supporting the, the arts full stop. Yeah, because they want to silence the voice. It's like, a, it's it's like an abusive parent. Yeah. Shut up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shut up. Stop it. Yeah. Stop it. And now it's like, yeah, yeah, we're stabbing and killing each other. Stop it. Be yeah, quiet. Yeah. Shh, we don't want to know about it under the carpet, innit? Yeah. We're, we're going through this. I'm on universal credit and da, 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 this ain't working. Shut up. Be quiet. Mm. And really and truly, you're just, if you are anyone who is in power, yeah, they need to be qualified. Mm. Not qualified as in qualified here. They need to be qualified here. Mm. Because if you are in power, you are here to serve. Mm. Anything that you do, Now's the time when, for that. Now is the time for real service. And the problem is people have veered away so much from the whole service aspect of what we're here to do. And they've become lost. They're thinking of the money first and the service after. When really it should be the service first and anything you are getting, it should be a byproduct of your highest service. Mm -hmm. Everyone here as a, as a place because there is only one me and one you and one that person and one that person. That person is a carpenter. What are they doing banging away at the keyboard? Mm. That person is a musician. What are they doing stacking shelves? Mm. If we was all in our natural places, this world would run a lot better. For real. Because that is the actual truth. Mm -hmm. You know, that is the actual truth. Not working to the people. They're not working to the people's skills. They're not working to the people's desires and needs, mm -hmm, innit? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. But they, they, see, I have a track on, on the Panacea album called Don't Doubt Yourself. And I say, look deep in yourself, look in your toolbox. Because everyone has a gift. You are the one to watch. Because pick up yourself, pull up your socks, like pipping your head in for the top. I get it. You're scared to fail. So now you're feeling lost. The press heavy on your chest, like bench weights. Bet you, you regret the day you never had faith. If in your mind you were a winner, you're there half, halfway beginners are in the competition even last place is better than ever trying to deny that you're great lying in the earliest grave until you pass away because even if you fall down we all make mistakes it's just lessons and blessings don't hesitate getting yeah man do you know what i mean do you know what i mean really and truly like everyone Ooh. has a gift and that gift is their purpose that is part of their purpose you're right? hearing a gift right here i mean this guy lyricist lyrics brother lyrics panacea is the new lp on the way but you've worked with a bunch of heads. I mean, like, hey, we're late to the party. Like, you've worked with so many people. Let's come, run them off. Well, um, I've worked with Keith Murray. Um, he he was on my album, um, The Quantum Leap, in 2012. Um, Rusty Jokes from Boot Camp. Um, I've worked with um, da, 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 Cormega. Cormega is such a blessed freaking guy, man. I love you, Cormega, man. I love on. you, bro. Yeah. Thank you, bro. Yeah, thank you for believing me and giving me the opportunity to work with you, man. Mad. Yeah, man. Gang. Lovely guy, really? man. Blessed brother, man. For real, man. He didn't come to me with no ego or anything like that. And at the period, that, like for a long period up until Panacea, um, um, I got nominated for an AIM award as well on that one. Yeah, I got nominated. I think I should have won, but hey, 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 that's Yo. that's debatable. Oh, that's that. debatable. You know the deal. Yeah, but Core Mega Man, like he was someone who took a chance. He was very patient with me, man. And, you know, he agreed to be in the video. We've become friends. And he is one of the most humble MCs in general that I've ever met. That's so sick. Yeah, he's that's a kind of what guy. I was. That's kind of what I wanted to hope. That's the, the realness, more, you yeah. know? Where a lot of people, man, that like they have this false bravado. Ultimately, it comes from a, a space of fear and everything. Like, he is a real mm. guy. He is actually a real guy. You also grow out of that shit pretty quick, don't you? Like, it starts like that. Mm. And you think, like, the world rotates, rotates around you, you know? Yeah, but that's just fear. It's fear, isn't it? That is just fear. Yeah. 
So, you know, that's why I've become a lot more forgiving because it is just fear. Yeah. Who else? Um, Who else have I worked with? Come on, you can name drop. I'll pick them up later, baby. <laughs> Come on. Talk that shit. Come on, man. Yeah, Ice Fire podcast. Yeah, man. I've worked with Klashnikov. Yeah. Kaiser. Yeah. Klashnikov's, yeah, yeah, man. We've we've had extensive conversations, man. Hours and hours of chatting. Again, man. this shout is some shit. Shout out to Shout out to Kaiser. I've worked with um, Flip Tricks. Oh, hold tight. Um, oh, high focus lock. Come on. Um, Genesis Elijah. Um, oh, yo, that tune, by the way. What's the name of the tune on the last project? Oh, oh. It's like the who's Expendables. Who. Bro, right. So this tune, Expendables. I was like. Let me roll that again. You know what I mean? Like, that is fire. Like, you had some heat on there. Bro, like, and again, just going back to the root of the, 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 the subject matter, yeah, you know. There's a lot, there's a lot. Man. There's a lot. And, <laughs> but the way you the way you deliver it, see, I can't listen to a whole Kendrick Lamar album. It's pretty intense. It's pretty, fu- it's rich. It's like you're having, like, your uh, Bonoffi pie to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Bonoffi pie. Yes, so it's, like, it's just yours yeah. and you're going through it and by the end mm-hmm. of it you're like <gasps> and I've had that sometimes with Kanye's first album as well to be fair mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. with your stuff it's got that I know these are, these are respectable comparables for a good reason Thank for you. real because like I just felt like everything was in its place I didn't feel like overwhelmed by it lyrical content everything had subject mm-hmm. matter mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, packaged really well do you know what I mean? And then these like gems that. of, you know what I mean? just Cinematic. Yeah. Shout out to Revorg Records. Hold Strange Revorg. Neighbor, I fucking love you, man. Yeah, man. Revorg, man. I mean, Let me tell you, I'll tell you. Really I'll tell on you, it. I'll tell, you, I'll, tell you about, I'll tell you about that actual particular project. Really funny story. So, um, Triple Darkness, um, you know, before they were Triple, before they were Triple Darkness, they were Phallic Heresy. They had, they were just recording their music with Chemo. Um, they had it just on the blank disc. They were trying to get it signed. No one was signing them. Um, me and my brethren, Demas, Dwayne, who was like an older brother to me, um, you know, in my teenage years, um, we put the record label together, Higher Heights, and we, we put them out. We raised 10 grand on the street and we, we put them out, man, because we was like, this, when I heard them in Speaker's Corner... You just knew. I was like, this needs, this is going to change... Yeah. The whole yeah dynamic of UK yeah. hip hop, and yeah. uh, when you tune in, yeah, you'll understand exactly what I mean. I love shout out to Cyrus Malachi. Like shout, we would we were branded as the UK's Wu Tang. Wow, worked with people like um, Killer Priest, um, Rock Marciano. Um, uh, they all know about us. Mad, yeah, about us. mad. Did you ever think? Because. We all have like, this is where the shaman bit comes in, by the way. We've all been in this moment mm-hmm. where you're like, eh, I don't know, man. I don't mm-hmm. know if, I don't know if this shit's going to, mm-hmm. fuck, mm-hmm. I'll do it. We actually talked about it earlier. Mm-hmm. You, you kind of have to be a bit mad in thinking that mm-hmm. if you keep going, it's going to work. Mm-hmm. But blind ignorance and desire. Faith. Faith. Gets you there. Yeah, yeah, it does, it does, it does. You firm believe in that? Well, it's like it's a it's a science, really. It's a science. Um, on my or in terms of the shamanic work that I've that I do and everything, what um, a lot of stuff has been shown to me. And one of the things is like um, it's your attention to your intention which generates the power, which is the manifestation. You know, it's like you imagine this: you have like two cups, and it's like your attention and your intention is like pouring water into it, 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 pouring water into it. And eventually, like everything is a vibration. Everything is vibrations. So even a thought has a size, shape and weight, even a color. So something tangible is is actually happening when you're even just thinking something. So when you when you begin to start thinking of something it's like a spark it's like a spark of energy mm. and then as you keep pouring your attention to your intention it grows it grows it grows it grows until it's like a sun and then it starts pulling things into its orbit that is my <laughs> magic that is law of attraction that is 
it's a physical thing that's taking yeah. place when you when you're thinking about something. Mm. And really is is really just a very deep spiritual um truth that we all know. You know, when you say I'm feeling your vibes, we already know everything is a vibration. That's do you think some of do you think some of that is, yeah, for sure. Music it, that's what they're scared of the most. Um what was I saying? Yeah, do you think people don't like you say they're aware of it, but they don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you yeah, think yeah. some of that? I've got a theory. Do Go you on, think on, some of me. that is because <clears throat> a lot of people, when they make mistakes, they don't own that shit. Mm. Uh, if you're accepting of that knowledge that mm-hmm, you're talking mm-hmm, about, mm-hmm. the um, synergy mm-hmm, and gravitation mm-hmm, mm-hmm, towards mm-hmm, something mm-hmm, you're doing right, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you kind of got to own it, which then puts mm-hmm. the bags. Do you remember when you got the fear last time when you mm-hmm, didn't accept that you did mm-hmm, something wrong? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, well, how can you accept that this is something wrong? It's almost like it's the seesaw thing, isn't it? Mm-hmm. It's where it's like you have love and you have fear. Fear is interconnectedness. No, no, love is interconnectedness and fear is fragmentation. So as long as you are on the frequency of love, then it will connect you to everything that you need. And that's mm-hmm. being open. And everything. Love. I think everyone needs a reintroduction to what love is. I'm with you. They need a reintroduction to what a man is, what a woman yeah. is, what love is. You know, yeah. we need to like, <laughs> yeah, we, people need. You, there's a scientific experiment that they've done with water, you know, and they've spoken words of hate or words of love into the water. And when you actually see what the love vibration does to a physical thing, you see geometrical shapes and patterns. And when you see fear or hate or whatever, which is fear being put into the water, you see fragmentation. And this is what happens to us internally. And this is what happens to us externally. Cancerous. Mm. It starts with the head, doesn't it? Yes, starts it almost, yeah, it starts from there. For intention, that's also something I was showing. Intention is the first language. You know, if someone has good intention for you, you usually feel it first because they've Mm. already spoken that. Mm. And the words that we use, these different tongues we use, they are supposed to best describe the intention. Do you think some people... it's a secondary language. Yeah, do you think some people excel at that? Because there is that theory of like body language, facial... Mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. facial quality Mm -hmm. you're a pretty boy you know what I mean it's like engaging is pretty straightforward you know what I mean it's not rocket science he's talking we're listening but with um, and the voice you know my boy reaps one hold tight reaps beatboxer reaps one hold tight reaps he he, you know he's gone into some deep depths of analysis on Mm -hmm. the human voice and what Mm -hmm, actually mm -hmm, triggers mm -hmm, people mm -hmm. to engage oh oh, we're we're, we're gonna touch upon that (laughs) so so there's a you know some people are just Pharrell's one of those guys that's just born with the the three qualities of a human being. Do you know what I mean? It's like pretty, great voice, and holds himself together with the right knowledge. Yes, 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 yes. yes. You know what I mean? There's some huge exceptions to the rules. Although I get what you're saying is being, uh, you know, scientifically correct. You, Mm -hmm. you know... And it is transferable. You are able to learn. Yes, 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 yes. It's, it's, it's the, we, our physical being and everything that we're doing is a physical manifestation of, of, uh, of us as a soul expressing itself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is what this physical vibration that we are looks like in the physical, mm-hmm. sounds like tastes like if you're cooking mm. it's the same thing manifested mm. in different different containers you know mm. it's the same thing I hope you're getting all of this ladies and gentlemen <laughs> um you see when you were speaking about sound sound is very powerful man mm. you know mm. um do you know about overtone singing Talk to me about that. You actually did make... Hey, listen, right? <laughs> we did talk about that a little bit in the studio earlier. So d- d- elaborate, because I'm, I, I am... I'm, I'm, I do, I'm not knowing, so do you explain? Oh, I'll show you. <laughs> oh. Like, 
the higher mm. frequency. Mm-hmm. You mean mm-hmm. it ever talk? Yeah, it's healing. It's healing <laughs> you mean it's healing, it's it's healing, it's healing, it's healing, it's healing, it's healing, it's healing, it's healing. <sighs> Where'd you learn that? Well, it's like um, a good friend of mine, um, Marv Radio, he does like beatboxing and stuff and I've heard him do overtones. Marvel? And, yeah, 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 Marv. Marv. yeah. Boom, Marv. that's my guy. Yeah, I heard him doing that and then I, I just searched up on the internet how to, how to overtone sing and then I've just, it's just, as I've been doing the shamanic work that I've been doing, it's just opening up more different, more different channels and more different things are coming and showing me how I can use my voice to actually align people and even exercise people. Even exercise people, yeah, as, as, as mad as it sounds, mm-hmm. you know, like I understand that a lot of the stuff we're going to talk about today, you need a reference for that. Mm. You need your own reference for that. Um, elaborate on that. You need your own reference. Well, you need to experience it. It's like... Um, I get you. Yeah, okay. You need to experience it, man. Yeah. Like I've, I've, um, I had um, a spaceship come into my room. I've been on a spaceship before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, come into my room. I put it in the album and stuff like that. And mm-hmm. when I talk about it, like I'm speaking about it because I know there are other people who are experiencing these things and they feel that... They can't talk yeah, about it. Yeah, they can't talk about it. But really and truly, the reality of life is more magical and more crazy and exciting than what we're seeing. The yeah, reality yeah. of what is actually going what we've, on. What we've even being born... In this time, in this space, in this place, there are some bigger questions to ask. I'll tell you about my experience if you want to hear it. Yeah, man. come on. It's your podcast, brother. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, yeah, Let's yeah. Get yeah. into it. If you don't want to get deep, man, switch off now. <laughs> Phoenix, the ice fired side the place. Come on. Yeah. Send it so, to So it's like, okay, so I was in my bedroom now and I was getting ready for bed. Um, had the lamp on. Um, my missus, yeah, it's funny, isn't it? Yeah. Get out of here, you motherfucker. It's funny, it's funny isn't it? It's just as we're it. talking about, it's just as we're starring. talking about the stuff. First time I've had a special guest. Everyone dropping. needs spotlight, man. Everyone needs a shot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, man. You're never going to see him again. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like I'm sitting there in, in my bed and um, my missus was in the toilet. And then um, all of a sudden I see this rectangular um, box come into the room it was marbling orange and purple and it hovered over my bed and i think the most crazy thing about that was i didn't feel i didn't react like normal like you thought you would like oh my god i'm scared and oh my help me you know what i mean yeah. like if my soul felt like i i knew them yeah. and my missus shouted from from the bathroom she said have you turned the light on so i'm so as it's come in all of a sudden i'm just I'm just, I'm, I'm just, I get on my knees and I'm just in front of um, this, this craft and I just feel like I know them. I felt honored. I felt like my being, cause I've moved from, uh, um, from, from, from the mind to the heart and, and the feeling, which is really where, uh, where, where mankind's ascension is moving from the mind to the heart and the feeling. Cause when you are feeling, you are tangibly touching something, you are in connection with something. I feel good. Yeah. Or that feels right. Or mm. it feels wrong. Like mm. you are actually feeling something mm. you're, when you're feeling you're touching. But anyway, so after my miss, my, my missus has walked in and as she's walked in, it started dispersing into geometrical shapes and patterns and colors all around the room. And she's just gone, oh, wow, that's beautiful. Look at all the colors. And she didn't react like normal. So she's lied down. I'm lying down. And I'm like, after it's kind of disappeared and everything, it felt like I was still in communication with it. Mm. And I'm like, what was that about? What was that about? And then something was like, go downstairs. So I've got up and I've just listened. I've got to the, (laughs) my whole journey has taught me just to listen. Mm. Get out the way and listen. Mm. It's like go and talk to that person. I'd be like, no, why are they gonna think I'm strange? I thought they go and talk to them. All right, you're like two monkeys on your shoulder. Like, do that, don't do that, do that. Yeah, I'm just like, do it. Like, I'm just like, do it. If I spirit tells me to do something, I just freaking do it. So I went downstairs. I'm sitting down, and I'm just like, I'm expecting to see anything. 
I'm expecting to see absolutely anything. And I was someone who was scared of E.T. <laughs> me yeah, too. When I was younger, I was that fucking kid. scared of a scary fucking thing. I was that like, scared what? the shit out of me. Like a bloody beef jerky. Dude. A giant beef jerky. That's you just... Elliot. Yeah, that, like, that whole thing. No. That scared the crap even out now, of me. Yeah, bro. Yeah, even, yeah. even now. <laughs> well, I've, I've gotten over certain things now. <laughs> I've no. had my mind blown so many freaking times, like that nothing yeah, we'll, phases you. We'll, we'll, yeah, nothing now, nothing phases. So after that, I'm sitting there and I'm expecting to see anything, and I check my heart, and I'm like, "Yo, you're unusually calm for someone who could just see anything right now." After what you just saw, nothing happened, and then it was like, "It's done," and I'm like, "What do you mean it's done?" All right, I'm going upstairs, and I'm lying down in my bed. And I'm thinking, what is this, man? And I've just closed my eyes and I'm like, what is this? Because I can't sleep after that. Mm. And then I heard this big, loud, it sounded like a door closing. <laughs> like, do, 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 bam. And I was going to open my eyes. Somebody said, don't open your eyes. And when I opened my eyes, I was walking up these stairs. <laughs> I'm somewhere else and I'm walking upstairs now. I look to the right and I see Polaroid pictures on the wall of people. And I'm looking so close at the pictures, I can see the crevices in their face and everything. And some of them look familiar as I'm walking up the stairs. And nah. I'm like, okay, so this isn't a dream then. I was actually in my bed and now I'm here. And then I felt like I was falling because the steps were quite steep. And something felt like it molded itself to the shape of my back and pushed me up the stairs. I've gone up, turned left, gone up. Straight ahead of me was this bed in the room and just saw people just sitting on the bed. They were naked and they had these black um, markings on them. I can't remember what they looked like. And this one person looked straight at me. That's why I remember them. I ended up seeing them a year after. They don't remember any of this. But yeah, I looked straight at them and I'm walking and right next to the bed, so like the bed is there, yeah. right next to the bed was a bay window. And I've looked out of the window and I saw this spaceship, massive, right outside the window. Oh, and wow. it was it, the, the lights were like blue and red. And I can't remember for the life of me, but I've written everything down, but I was taken from that space to the ship. And as I'm on the ship, everything is white. Everything looks white. Right is there from stuff here. in it? Is there anything in it? Or is it just The only thing I saw was this glass cylinder. This glass cylinder. And it had like an orb of light in it. And then I started, I didn't see anyone. Mm. I didn't see any aliens. I didn't see anything. I didn't see that they must have kept themselves hidden. But I didn't see them. I just started hearing Yahweh. It was like Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh. And it's speeding up, speeding up speeding up and as it's speeding up this light was getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until it how did you feel flooded. when you saw that then i just i didn't feel like normal yeah i felt calm but as it's going going bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger it was a blinding light and then i woke up in my bed wow and then i felt completely different i've never felt so the same astral again. projecting i have no i fucking connecting did, man. I, I don't know man like but like as I was I was fully awake and conscious when I was in my bed when the ship came. No drugs, in. nothing like that. No, no, no. I was just going to bed, man. Going to bed. My wow. missus was getting ready. Like she freaking saw. She saw. Yeah. yeah, she saw. Yeah, she saw. Um, it's just enough. Of, it's just a vibration that somehow you cross. Listen, within. if they want, to, if anything wants to get a hold of you, it doesn't matter they will connect with you. There is nothing that is built here. Yeah. Like, yeah, we're always constantly being yeah. watched and there's higher technology Bro, I'm with and it. higher everything. I'm with it. <laughs> People call it duppy. They call it ghost. It's it's not that. It's something that is, you know what I mean? Without sounding too crass, dogs only see in black and white. They may have the best senses yeah. in the world, but it doesn't mean because we've got our senses that there is any more. For the, it's beyond that, isn't there it? There are colours beyond the spectrum that we're able to see. See, yeah. The things that you're painting and you're doing, on your, your, whatever you're doing, don't think that that's the dimension you're seeing it. Yeah, it gets yeah, man. Surreal. There's many, like even even dogs, man. Like they've got like their senses are like Crazy. a thousand times. So mm. when they're eating certain things, there's a whole dimension mm. of that they're dealing with. Yeah, just in eating something, and we're just giving them some 
bullshit. You're just like whatever, but exactly. they're tasting things and hearing things on a higher level beyond our spectrum. They're in a different yeah. reality. And have you, you ever know? like had a, right, you ever been in a company of a dog or owned a dog where yes, you see all of a sudden they ears prick up and look mm-hmm. at a thing that you ain't even you, mm-hmm. there's nothing there. Mm-hmm. But their ears prick up, their head tilts, they're like, mm-hmm. what the fuck is that? And you're looking mm-hmm. at them looking at this thing that's not even there and you're like, Oh, you think they're not there. Exactly. So um. what we're dealing with here, I feel, particularly in the and I went down the ghost route on purpose because recently I deal with that too. Even in here, even in here, like the other day, right, I was sitting there. Hit me. I was sitting there and I was on my phone and I just finished on my phone and I saw something shoot from my the blind side of my eye. Okay. It just went. Mm-hmm. And I that's happened before I'm paying no attention. Yeah. But I had a cloth on that table right mm-hmm, there mm-hmm. and the cloth moved okay. as it did it. Yeah, yeah. Now, that was the first time where I was like, hey, listen. This ain't a joke. <laughs> it's, it's not a joke. It's not a joke. It's, it's not Dave Chappelle. It's not. It's because I, for the first time, you know what I mean? I felt like people have said that there's something in the studio here. Yeah, there is. Yeah. And, I, and now I kind of think to myself, well, mm-hmm. live and let live, whatever. But... Yeah, the now I've seen it. I'm like, yeah, okay, we'll live in. Li- li- That's what I'm but saying. I know you need now. your own reference. Yeah, people need their own references, and yeah. we're being given signs like all the time throughout our lives, and mm. you know, <laughs> they're, they're they're constantly higher dimensional frequency beings are always trying to connect with us all the time, but we're just freaking slow, slow, and that I think is um, perhaps that's a calcif- calcifying of our own minds. And allowing it to be okay, it's just is what it is. Mm-hmm. It's, is it, it's what we've been dealt with, we've been, been taught. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's programming. Been, programming. And uh, just a disconnection with um, nature itself and reality itself. Mm. Because even the way, like, the way we consume food is unnatural. We used to, you know, if we didn't have all of this, we'll be eating when the foods are in season. <laughs> as in the earth is saying... It's time to eat this now. Mm. It's time to eat. That is off the table now. You're eating this. Yeah. And being in the rhythm of nature is what also keeps you well. Yeah. The further away you go from nature, the sicker you become. So really what we live in is this something which is plastic coated over reality itself. This is why people are so sick right now. Yeah. Mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally. Because we're disconnected from that. These poor kids. These poor kids that... that they are being dealt a bad hand to to the core. They've got to be, re, there's got to be a retraining, a of, reintroduction yeah. to to actual reality here. With us included, everyone, the generations, you know. I mean, never mind there being a Boris Johnson or a fucking Donald Trump or whatever in the next few generations. Like it's it's deeper than that. It is deeper than that. It's a whole conscious shift, big time. And that's what shaman shamanism. Yeah, is about. shamanism. Yeah, yeah. So. A shaman is a shaman is a priest. The shaman is um, um, witch warlock. A shaman is basically the bridge between the spiritual and the physical. You know, just being uh, um, a channel. Yeah, just a channel between the two. Mm-hmm. So anything that is going on spiritually or any kind of ancestors or communications that are trying to get to you, a shaman is someone who is able to translate that or connect you, or to see things on a on a vibrational level. Like, when I'm in people's spaces, I can feel if they are feeling, if they've got a lot of dense energy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you if can clock that. People are heavy. Yeah, real, yeah, yeah. Can people clock are, that. yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. you can clock it when... Uh, something smells in this room. What the fuck is it? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, It's yeah, one yeah, of them yeah, ones. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, something's yeah. a little... Or more. it's like, oh, I know exactly what, what, what is it. Because everything is always speaking. Everything mm. is a vibration always speaking. Sometimes if, if, if I want, I'll get someone's age or I'll get someone's star sign sometimes or I get someone's name. It's happened where I've got someone's name. Ooh. But it's because everything is always speaking. The intention is always speaking. Even if they're not trying to speak with words, they're always speaking. And it's if you're sensitive saying, yeah. enough, then you will pick it up. You will hear them speak. I've had that too. Mm. Can I ask something? Uh, who, are your, who are your MC artist influences? 
Like, who would you say, like... And the reason why I ask that is because... Of course, man, that's cool. These, these conversations, I'm now starting to think to myself, I mean, like, like you listen to Phoenix's work and, of course, there's a... But how could... I'm curious to know if you feel like hip-hop, rap, the influences you have, the things that you put out, do they reach the depths? Have they reached optimum depths have they reached optimum depths whereby you feel completely and utterly uh f- you feel complete fluidity in your flow in your f- content i'm now starting to think mm. uh, you you're close but i'm curious what you panacea panacea yeah. like so funny enough um cinematic yeah so to jump back to jump forward um when I was, um, I was, uh, I was, it was an open mic that I met Strange Neighbor. Right. Um, he'll tell you about this when you chat with him. But um, yeah, we was in the line and we was getting ready to jump up on the open mic. Mm. And I was just hungry, man, mm. selling CDs and stuff. And and I was selling it even in the even in the freaking queue as we're gonna get up to MC and Standard I sold it. Shit, come on. He bought he bought the the Triple Darkness and a FEMA album, you know, and. Um, he bought it in the line and then after that, like, he checked it out and everything. And he wasn't Revo rep- Records then. I think he was just starting out. And then he had no connection to, like, the scene. He was trying to get in the scene. <laughs> and um, when he hit me up and was just like, yo, man, I'd like to work with you, chuck you a couple beats. I said, I'd do you one better. Like, let's work on an album together. <laughs> let's work on a project together came up with um, the concept cinematic that every track was going to be like a genre of film. Same. And that album was the first, like I used that album as a way to kind of connect him to the scene as well. So all of the people I was hollering at, it was like, oh my God, you're able to get this one. You're able to get that one. Oh my God. I was like, yeah, "Yeah, man, I'm fucking, you, you, like you're bringing your half. I'm going to bring my half. I'm going to give, like, I'm really, like, I love your intention. I love your energy. And it, like, that was the spot. And it didn't come, like, that was done like five years ago, five, six years ago, that album. Well, it came out in 2020? Yeah. But it was done years ago. The only reason why it didn't come out at that time is because the artwork wasn't ready. Right. We tried a piece of artwork. It didn't work. I was like, no, unless it's got a face, a proper face, because I'm all about my art, then it's not coming out. He had gone through his things where he took a hiatus and everything just came at the right time. Mm. So now it's funny because when we made that, he never had... He never had his setup as it. He wasn't Revorg Records as you know it today. Because then he was the beginning. Yeah, yeah, he built like this thing up. Yeah, and before now he's he platform. met all of these people. So it's like we made it then, and it was like it was put in a time capsule for when he built his thing, that's and then cool. it's like boom, it come out, and 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 that's why he allowed me to kind of record um, Panacea for free, man, because it was like I fucking love you, man. It was a you know, and also it. it's it's uh, it's uh, when it's when it's cooked, it's ready. If it don't feel right, then that, that mm, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, but then at the same time, like we're saying here, so it's a constant journey. It's a constant mm-hmm. tweaking of mm-hmm. of parts and components mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. modifying. Mm-hmm. 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 Again, what are your influences? Um, MCs. Yeah, like Nas hmm. is is my is my favorite. Um, uh, Core Mega, Common, um, Mob Deep. Um, Talib Kweli, Andre mm. 3000, Cannabis, mm. um, Big Pun, um, Tupac. Mm. Um, lyricists. Yeah, lyricists, lyricists, man. Real lyricists. People thought lyricists. about that shit. Talib Kweli, mm. um, MF Doom. Oh, rest in peace. Ooh. Yeah, rest in peace, man. I really <laughs> did want to work with him, man. It's a shame that he's gone. Um, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, so those 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 people are like my favorite, and then um. But I can hear that. I can I can sense that. Yeah, I can feel that. Clash Nakoff, like Wu Tang, obviously Wu Tang. Do you know? Hmm. So yeah, man, those are my influences. Yeah, I see, and that resonates. That resonates, particularly on the Nas front. I think the patterns. There's a couple of moments of patterning oh, yeah, where I'm yeah, like, yeah, that's descriptive stuff you know what i mean like vision you can almost see it kind of shit mm-hmm, you know mm-hmm, that's mm-hmm, that's cold mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that's cold talking of seeing shit so illustratively 
you've got the new comic. The comics is happening. The comics are in. Yeah, they're yeah, the comics. Pro- yeah, they're yeah. done. They're done. So, um, talk, um, talk, talk to the people. Talk to the people. So I've got this um, company called Sovereign Comics. Um, Dean Richards is the illustrator, animator, um, video director, editor. Um, yeah, just overall powerhouse. I'm the writer. Um, 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 I'm the person who co- has created the whole Sovereign Comics universe in terms of like the intellectual property stuff. Um, my my eldest son, um, um, Ashton, he came up with this character called um, Mr. Imagination, who is the mascot for our educational arm mm. of the whole company. So we've got the commercial side, it, like we've we've... The whole sovereign comics thing is about seeing every race, every creed, every warrior archetype as sovereign. Mm. So we touch upon, you know, got a character called Red Strike, and she's like this um, Shasta Vidya um, warrior, which is a dying Sikh martial art. So we kind of bringing them back to the forefront, you know? Ooh. Yeah, man. I've Damn. got got I've got over. Over a hundred characters, man. Well over a hundred. And we even sat down with the Comic-Con and they said, what we got is the regeneration of comic books. And what we're doing with comic books just hasn't been done. You know, we've got, um, we've, our thing is edutainment. Mm. So we've got a book on obesity that um, where, you know, all of these subjects like obesity, um, knife crime, oh, the frequency is changing. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't even. I couldn't even. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We Lord. Um, obesity, um, suicide, knife crime, um, sexual trauma and abuse. Um, all the social sciences fit in within the PSHE section of um, education, mm. which is malnourished right now. Mm-hmm. All of those subjects they're malnourished and they're also very uncomfortable and very rigid and uh, clunky to deal with. But mm. add in the whole um, illustration and the whole comic book feel to it, it's just it's just allowing people to just get these concepts. Um, in a more palatable way, mm. do you know what I mean? Yeah. So we've already sold books to um, Britannia Village, and um, we're working right now with a gentleman named Mr. Number Vita, who um, he's an educator who teaches head teachers and school teachers, um, and um, he was on the BBC. Uh, he writes for BBC Bite Size, and we're doing a mathematics book on um, equivalent fractions. That's sick. So that's coming out. We've got our books out right now on www.sovereigncomics.co.uk. Yeah. Um, we're moving into animation. Uh, we want to animate our workshops, um, and we want to do a series of books on all of these subjects within mathematics. So equivalent fractions, times tables, all of that. Ultimately, we want to have them as um, as uh, animated children's programs. Yeah, yeah. You know, where it's like you got the whole feel and excitement of like, you know, your comic book characters and heroes, but it's got, it's, the, it's educational. Mm. Which is what's missing, isn't it? Which is exactly what is missing. Crazy how you took that for granted when we was kids. Mm. Yeah, I mean, that stuff was just there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I guess maybe you're a little bit too young for Zamo at Grange Hill, but, you know, when he got yeah, done, he had the tracks down the arm. He was, a, he was a, you know, he was off his nut. Kids need to see that shit too, mm-hmm, to a degree. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They need to be educated in the best way that is determined on, on the pro- the program it is, you know. Yeah, we need Cartoons to... And excitement and excitement is a, is a fund- fundamental thing in mm. education, you know. Like, and curiosity and just... Because, you know, you give a child, I don't know, a, a cup, they'll soon find out exactly what it is, yeah. what it's for. It's like, all right, can I break it? Can mm. I eat it? No, mm. I can't eat it. Can I... Uh, and that's 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 a that's emotional intelligence. That is that is the core part of intelligence. Like, just, just, just creativity and expressing and all of that, like, is... is it's it's a form of intelligence mm. which the children are being starved from in yeah. today's mainstream education. True. So edutainment, edu- when something is fun, you're gonna keep doing it. Yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. Yeah, emotion first. Yeah, emotion, emotion, emotion first. first. Yeah, energy and motion, emotion is mm. an equation, isn't it? So that's the future. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Edutainment. 
And the album? When's that coming oh, out? Oh, and the album, well, it is out, man. Like, Cinematic is out. That's out. Yeah, that's out. Cinematic out. is out. It came out, like, um, it came out on my birthday, September 1st. Man, I, you know what? Beautiful birthday. Yeah, birthday fuck it. Come on, man. Like, and <laughs> you know what's mad anyone. is that time is, like, flying. Mm -hmm. But then that feels, like, so long ago. But mm -hmm, then, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and there's always new projects. There's always new things. There's always new things. It's just, like, a big jet stream of constants isn't it it's mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm, like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that real artistry for you isn't it really yeah man like I, I love I, I never stop creating man never mm -hmm. like I think like creativity fucking saved my life mm -hmm. because I had so much energy like I, I remember I was just like I'm, I'm either gonna freaking kill myself or kill someone or explode if mm -hmm. this doesn't come out mm -hmm. it needs to, and I think that's what a lot of young children of today is uh, the problem is they've forgotten that life is magic. Mm. Life is magical. And they're, they're not being supported in expressing themselves, whether it's physically or, you know, creatively. And there's a block there. Mm. And, you know, if something isn't able to flow, then it's going to cause all of these things, man. It's going to cause, like, emotional, mental trauma. Mm. And you're going to do this. They say the devil makes work for idle hands. For real. You need to do something. You're going to create or you're going to destroy. Yeah. That's so fucking true. Yeah. And, you know, well, I just, just something struck me as you were talking. I was like, I remember when I was first getting into UK hip hop and stuff. And I would have some deep conversations with a lot because, mm -hmm. you know, UK hip hop heads and MCs and artists are deep thinkers. They're super deep thinkers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I've had a number of people come in and they're like, yo, thanks for doing this podcast thing because <clears throat> it gives an opportunity for us to talk. And I was like, mm -hmm, yeah, but there's mm -hmm. loads of, you know, you're an MC. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you talk, man. You, you do talk. Mm -hmm. But off the back of you just saying that, and I, I went into like kind of one hole in my head of like, Man, this is one of them deep conversations that I used to have with my hip hop friends when I was eighteen or nineteen, mm, and but mm -hmm. it just never ever got documented. Mm, so, mm -hmm, for mm -hmm. Mark, thank you because like now yeah, I get it. You. Now all of a sudden I'm like, yeah, oh, now I get this podcast thing. <laughs> yeah, you're doing two hundred, two hundred plus in. I'm like, oh yeah, these conversations never did get documented, did they? Yeah, you're 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 removing the blockages, man. Yeah, from the stream of energy that is that is coming from source and is supposed to come out. You're removing the blockage. Bro. That's cold. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my brother thank yeah. you so much for passing through well thank you killed man. that shit thank you thank you yeah bro. we didn't even get to talk about the shamanism did we, we uh, didn't get that. Yeah. yeah we're gonna do part twos on this one for yeah, real yeah. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen phoenix ice fire love love everyone thank you my brother thank you man thank you big shout out to graffitikings.co.uk we are out like in was out of fashion killer killer podcast community hard raw and heavy each and every time Sharing is caring. Do not sleep. I repeat, do not sleep on that repeat. Share away. Yeah, man. Shout out to New Dawn Records, Receptor Records. Shout out to Revolg Rep Records, Triple Darkness. I love all of you guys. Husky Brown, I love all of you guys. Thank you. A little tight. Big shout out Kirk as well. Yes. We are like that. Stay lucky, people. Peace. Peace.